Okay, so this is on application of definition question. And um, I tend to think, uh, oh, that's easy. You just plug the numbers into the formula. But it involves mathematical formalism that people might not be fully familiar with yet. So I think it's still worth doing, if for nothing else, to point out the, the visual picture that, that you should have in mind. So, so, so the question says, a uniform electric field of some magnitude is perpendicular to a square sheet of sides. Um, so let me label this L, 5 meter long. What is the electric flux through the sheet? And it's the application of this definition of electric flux. We define electric flux as a dot product between the electric field vector and the area vector. And I did a, a more in-depth coverage of that product on Friday's virtual class session. So if you need it, go back and take a look at that. For now, I'm just going to write down the formula that it's uh, the magnitude of electric field vector times the magnitude of the area vector times the cosine of the angle between them. That's how we define that product in physics. The area vector is the one that requires a little bit of an explanation um, for those of you who weren't at the last week's lab. So let me do that explanation now. So you have to imagine um, an electric field. Uh, let me draw the electric field vertically. So let's say you have electric field pointing this way of uniform of magnitude E naught. And um, let me draw a side view. So a side view of the square sheet would look almost like a line. Um, in the perspective view, you have to imagine, um, you know, something that looks like this of length L on either side. And uh, from the kind of edge on view, it would look like just a line of five meters. And so, and most of us are familiar with the area of a square. Area of a square is L squared. Uh, that's where the firm term square comes from. Now, a lot of us are not familiar with the thinking of area like a vector. It comes down to the fact that area, area like this, it's a directed quantity. Area oriented this way is different from more area oriented this way. So we need some way of specifying direction of area. And I do lecture through that uh, to state it briefly. We use a, um, a vector that is normal, perpendicular to the area to, to describe, to define and describe the direction of area. So here uh, in the perspective view, the direction of the area vector would go perpendicular to this um, area. Um, or, and usually we like to describe it in terms of the magnitude times the normal vector, a unit vector that is um, perpendicular to the area that you are describing. And this concept is something that's going to occur um, over and over. And as we are doing Gauss's law application, it's particularly important. So in this picture, what's important is that my area is a directed quantity, it's a vector quantity that goes in this direction perpendicular to the surface. So, so for the, this question here, basically what you need to do is take a dot product of the electric field vector with the area vector. And I hope you notice that the angle between these two vectors will be zero because they are parallel, they are pointing in the same direction. Cosine of zero is one, so the this really simplifies down to the electric field times the area. So the answer is so super simple here. 1.9 times uh, 5 squared. I'm going to do that in calculator. <laughs> okay, uh, so it's going to be 4.75 times the 10 to the 5 meters squared. I forgot about that. So <laughs> let me enter that. And, um, and the next question is a very similar setup with a slight change. So let me copy that over and answer it. Now, 
most of what we've written down for question four will still apply. So let me just uh, uh, keep both the picture, both questions on one screen and uh, uh, finish question five by modifying what I have already um, uh, marked for question four. So a lot of the setup is similar. Uh, question gives uniform electric field of some magnitude. Um, it, oh, but this is new. It's uh, at an angle of theta. Uh, I'll have to mark that on my drawing to a square shield of side, this time six meters. So that plays the same role as five meters above. Um, what is the electric flux through the sheet? So the definitions we've stated, they don't change. The flux is still defined as electric field vector dot product with the area vector, which is defined as this, E A cosine theta. Now what's probably going to change is what that product is, because my theta is no longer zero. Um, so it says it's at an angle of 80 degrees. I have a feeling this is how it's stating that angle. So let me, um, so the angle between the uh, electric field and the area here, this was described as perpendicular as most people would. The 80 degree angle that they're describing, I think that's uh, more like this. So if I take this whole area and I'm imagining rotating it around an axis that's perpendicular to the screen, then what this would look like is there's a way to rotate it. Ah. Um, all right. It, really? There's no arbitrary rotation? That's annoying. Oh, okay, let me just redraw the rotated version. So this was the unrotated version. The version that's uh, uh, rotated so that it's at an angle of 80 degree to this square sheet would look like this. Um, so the area vector is still perpendicular to the uh, surface or along the surface normal. And the 80 degree angle that they are referring to, I think it's this angle here. And of course the length um, of one of the sides of the square. So as we are applying this definition of flux, we have to be careful because they don't mean that the angle between this angle here, it's uh, not the angle between the electric field vector and uh, area vector. In fact, this angle is um, super imprecise because when you have a plane, and you have a direction that's uh, uh, in one sense can be measured as going at 80 degrees. There are other ways of measuring angle from that line to the plane that won't be 80 degrees. I mean, you have this, uh, uh, what is it called? Complementary angle, that's 100 degrees, that's one. But there are also other angles between 80 and 100 degrees when you look at this. So it's uh, um, that's one of the reasons we use the surface normal to specify the direction of area because the angle between a surface normal, a vector, and electric field, another vector, is quite precisely, de de uh, precisely defined. And uh, when you work through the geometry here, maybe with the help of an auxiliary figure that looks like this, then you can see that, oh, the angle between the area vector and the electric field vector is actually this angle, which would be 10 degrees. So, so that's what I need to plug in. I need to say my electric flux is the electric field times the area or the length squared. <laughs> Let me square it now. Um, times cosine of 10 degrees. And this uh, intuitive grasp of electric flux will be really useful as you try to think through uh, what kind of Gaussian surface would work for application of uh, application of Gauss's law? The thing about electric flux is that we don't actually care about electric flux most of the time. But uh, what 
this uh, knowledge of electric flux is useful for is for applying Gauss's law, which allows you to drive electric field formulas that are otherwise really complicated to drive. So let me just put in the numbers here. Oh, wait, I heard the calculator. Um, so let me do electric. I'm just going to um, um, put in the mantissa for the scientific number, 6.5. Uh, times the side was six meters, six squared times, and I need the cosine of 10 degrees. Uh, is equal to 244, um, so uh, 244 times the 10 to the 4 um, and all that. So it will be 2.45 um, 2 times the 10 to the power of 6. So let me plug that in, make sure I didn't make a mistake. So, yeah. And um, usually when we do application of Gauss's law for finding electric field, um, oftentimes we won't be considering surfaces that are some arbitrary angle from the electric field. It'll I'll always be either 90 degrees, meaning the normal vector is parallel to the field, or zero degrees, meaning normal vector is 90 degrees. Um, and I hope you saw the uh, examples of that in the lecture videos and that made a sense um, that how you can say that electric flux through certain surfaces are zero without having to do detailed calculation.